welcome Mike Paul to Turnaround Talks. Um, Turnaround Talks is created to for good news. Basically, it's a channel to talk about all the good things that are happening, especially in the current climate. Um, mindset, faith, focus, I think makes such a difference to people. So we're having interviews with some phenomenal people in Leicester just to get their views, to get their input, and also talk about the good things as well that are coming our way. So obviously, Mike, I know you. Would you mind just saying to people who you are, what you do, for the people that perhaps aren't familiar with you? Sure. Well, good afternoon, Amanda. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Kapoor. Um, I founded my own telecommunications company in Leicestershire, which I still run. I'm chairman of the National Space Centre, chairman of Leicester City Football Club Trust, and a trustee of the National Forest and Derby College Group, as well as being on the board of a number of local charities. And on top of all of that, I have the huge honour and privilege of being Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant of Leicestershire. Oh, thank you, Mike. Obviously, you play, play such a predominant role in Leicester and Leicestershire. And right now, we have got a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, but what is your message to business owners across Leicestershire right now? We're going through a very difficult time at the moment under the most uh, unprecedented circumstances any of us have ever faced or ever likely to face, if I'm honest. So it's quite understandable that people are worried about safety and health of their loved ones and what may happen to their own livelihoods as a result of that. So I think my, my message to business owners in Leicestershire is that when things seem to be going against you, the best thing to do is, is to try and get back to basics. So, you know, I encourage you to remain calm, keep thinking with a clear head. You need to be logical and you can't do that with an emotional state of mind. Make sure you've got a plan. You may already have had one before this current crisis hit. So think about what changes you need to make to accommodate the new ways of working, not only for your company, but your customers and your suppliers as well. Don't make knee-jerk reactions. What you decide now may have to remain in place for a very, very long time and actually may not be reversible. So invest your resources wisely. And remember your staff as well. They'll have the same anxieties as you. Bring them with you because they could be your biggest asset. They always have been and they always will be. And just remember, you're not alone. Don't be afraid to ask for help. What positive changes do you actually see from a result of all of this? I think it's very difficult initially to start talking about silver linings when hundreds of families locally and hundreds of thousands of families around the world are mourning the loss of a loved one to this horrendous virus. You know, our factories and offices, schools, religious and community buildings are closed. And, you know, you won't be surprised if a lot of people feel like maybe the world has come to a standstill. But ultimately, we're going to have to move on. And when we do, the lockdown, I think, will have taught us many things. Um, I think it will have shown us how we adapted in a very short space of time to new ways of working, such as remote working and using video conferencing. Um, were some of our previous practices and policies actually as necessary as we once thought? Now might be a good time to review them from scratch. It's a great opportunity. Um, the importance of developing local supply chains, I think, which in turn will help grow the local economy. Um, some businesses will have been dismissive of flexible working practices as being unworkable in the past, and yet the last two months have shown us that they're very workable with the right approach and the right place. I think one important thing is everyone, when they lead a business, values the quality thinking time, which we don't readily have access to in normal business routines. But most of us have had the priceless commodity of this for the last two months now. So it'll be very interesting to see how we change our business models on the back of it. And remember, necessity is the mother of invention. She's here now, so let's rise to that challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. So how do you see the future for Leicester? And what do you think makes Leicester so special, especially with everything that you've said and everything that what's happening? What for you is the very special essence of Leicestershire? I'm glad you used the word special, Amanda, because this is a special place. Uh, we have a very rich and diverse history. As a city, we go back nearly 2,000 years. And because of that, I don't think it was any coincidence that the Queen chose Leicester to be the place where she started her tour of the country to celebrate her Diamond Jubilee back in 2012, so she recognised it's special. But it's more than just that. I think Leicester's special because it's a very important area in the heart of the UK. 
the economy. It's special because it's got the fastest growing jobs market in the UK and was named a top city for hiring in 2020 before the coronavirus hit. It's special because we've got the largest economy in the East Midlands and we're cited as one of the best cities to do business in the UK. And it's special because of food. Stilton cheese, Red Leicester cheese, <laughs> Melton pork pies, just four of the things that we're famous for. And remember that tourism started here. We've got three brilliant universities that do fantastic things, uh, engineers, athletes, and scientists in medicine. I mean, we're completely in the hands of the best scientists in the world to defeat this awful virus. And actually, where are some of those scientists? Well, they're actually here under our noses at Leicester University, investigating a decoy protein that could trap the virus and stop infecting our bodies, which would be terrific if they could achieve that. It's special because it's the home of the National Space Centre, as I know so well, and it will soon become home to Leicester Space Park Leicester, one of the most exciting developments in the UK space sector. And from there, the University of Leicester Space Research Centre will carry on having a dominant role on the world stage. It's special because we've got lots of brilliant companies here that have started up, grown and remained. Just to name three, Jules, Donnellum and Morningside Pharmaceuticals. But I could main name lots and lots more. And we're special because we're home to the 2016 Premiership Champions. Who could forget that? So with all that I've said, we've got every reason to feel very, very special. And I think it's really heartening to hear that and sometimes it's difficult to remember all of this isn't it when like you say when everything else is going on I think Leicestershire is an amazing county we've got amazing businesses and when you look at it we've got so much to to get ourselves out of this is there anything else that you'd like to add Mike from this is there anything that that's come up to you just as you've been speaking or anything that you'd like to share anything more further yeah, I mean, I think that the one thing that will always be a great asset to this city and county is, is our people. Less your people are innovative and resilient, and actually so is our local economy. They make it that way. So we've every reason, I think, to be positive and steadfast in our ambitions for future growth. We've done it before. Remember in the 70s when the textile industry was decimated here? Uh, we got through that and we're a vibrant city and county again. And whilst I won't pretend it'll be easy, we'll do it again. Um, what gives me great confidence is that being Lord Lieutenant has allowed me to gain a unique and privileged perspective on the people and organisations of Leicester and Leicestershire. I've learned of some of the tremendous work done by the police officers as well as by the officers themselves when I, sit, when I present them their police long service medals. I've seen hardworking people giving freely what spare time they have to support others in their community. Look at now, whether they're working in the NHS, emergency services, care homes, shops, supermarkets, emptying our bins for us or delivering our post, or even the army of volunteers that have arisen to the challenge of helping. They've shown kindness and bravery despite the concerns they must all have for their own safety. I get to see the generosity of some very wealthy people. They give their money freely. And I've also been able to marvel at the human spirit which sees this city and county come together to send messages of solidarity when we have atrocities anywhere in the world. And I've been honoured to present awards to the next of kin of those whose organs were donated so that others may have life. Um, and as, they've all, as they always have done, as I think they always will do, our communities have come together at this point, regardless of background and at our greatest time of need. This county is full of so many brilliant people doing tremendous things that I have every confidence in our collective future. Oh, do you know, you're just the essence and the tonic of exactly what we wanted in Turnaround Talks. The, the, the person that, that just has so much faith and, and belief and, and, and like you say, just the energy and, and thank you for, for contributing. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Really grateful that you, you had some time to join me. And, and yeah, this, this will obviously help and I think will be a shit for a lot of people to hear. So thank you, Mike. Really well, I, hope, I hope it has the, the, the right um, tone of, you know, we, we're in a serious situation, but there's hope and you know, perhaps those initiatives. Oh, thank you. Thank you so All much. Right.